President James Gavrilos from our, our Education Foundation please come up to the podium and would President Charmaine Postal from the Palm Beach County PTA come to the other? I'm certainly glad nobody mentioned your jacket as well. <laughs> as I, I gaze upon it, there's only one thing I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on now to the Education <laughs> Foundation report. You're, you're a good sport, Char Chairman Barbieri. I, I was struck by your, a number of comments made tonight <clears throat> about some of the work that's being done. You know, we know that our teachers are incredibly competent and dedicated and that they're great educators, but when you see the work they do outside of <sighs> reading, writing, and arithmetic, as a community, we are strongest when we lift up the weak. And when you hear the programs that are going on, uh, it can only inspire us to do greater and to do better. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, who we know a great civil rights leader, but we often forget he started out as a pastor and a theologian. Dr. King said the moral arc of the universe bends slowly, but it bends towards justice. And that's when we as a community lift up those who just need that lift up. Ms. McQuinn, I was struck by your, your comments on the Winter Scholarship, something very dear to us, and I get a little emotional too. The Winter Scholarship is currently in four schools, Green Acres, Egret Lakes, Jupiter Elementary, and C.O. Taylor Kirk Lane. And the Education Foundation is honored to partner with Hermine Dresner and the late Jan Winkler uh, to do this scholarship. As Ms. McQuinn pointed out, we hold those funds until these young people go to school. Y you left out the key part of the criteria, however. They have to be the first person in their family to go to college. When we go to these four schools and do the paperwork with these families, I have to bring three translators with me, Creole, Spanish, and, and Portuguese, because most of these families are recent arrivals in America. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing to see this community come together to support that program. I have shared with this board, uh, the one that touches me in particular, I'll, I'll get weepy with you, Barbara, um, is C.O. Taylor Kirk Lane, which is sponsored by Ed, Taz uh, Ed Tanser, our former board chairman. Ed was part of the first class at C.O. Taylor Kirk Lane uh, just a couple of years ago. Um, his principal was, was Clifford Taylor. Uh, I have a picture at this year's ceremony of Ed Tancer standing next to Clifford Taylor, uh, you know, 50 years down the road, now, now Ed, a, a respected attorney in this town. It's that kind of community that makes this place wonderful. So the Winter Scholarship, we don't talk about it a lot, uh, we probably should, but I do want you, the board, to know this is another service we offer the school district. We administer the Winter Scholarship program for, uh, for those four schools. We talk about people who have overcome obstacles, and Ms. Brill, I appreciate your, your commercial for the Distinguished Alumni and Leadership Award. This year, we are going to be honoring a great alum of the Palm Beach County Public Schools, Zach Gottsagen, who is getting rave reviews for his performance in the Peanut Butter Falcon. Uh, he is a graduate of the Alexander Dreyfus School of the Arts, and we could think of no greater leader to recognize this year than Alexander Dreyfus himself. So in addition, on March 19th to honoring Zach, we will be honoring Mr. Dreyfus for all of his incredible uh, contributions to education and the field of business uh, throughout his career. As we're winding up the year, <clears throat> I've shared with you most of the programs over the last couple months. We still have three shopping days left at our Red Apple Supply, but dear board members, I want to give you our half-year report. I projected that we would distribute about $700,000 in school supplies as of today. Oh, we're so close. We're at $399,906.52. Uh, so we're almost at $400,000 in school supplies distributed in just one semester. As I said, there are still three shopping days. More important as we look at the growth of Red Apple and the Education Foundation, as opposed to last year when we had 1,392 volunteer hours, this year we're at 1,798 volunteer hours, over 1,798 hours by our community coming together to lift up those who need a hand. We are strongest when we raise the weak. Ladies and gentlemen, we are your education foundation, serving the needs of the students, teachers, and schools in the finest school district in the state of Florida. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Absolutely. President Juan Pagan from the Puerto Rican Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, would you please come up to the podium? And then Pastor Beto Discua, President of the Association of Spanish Churches in Palm Beach County, would you come up to the other podium? podium? Okay. Okay. 
you know, he needs a translator. Okay. Oh. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, Mr. Chair, Dr. Finoy, board members, thank you very much for having me here tonight. What I just passed out to you is a reminder we're having in Palm Beach County for the eighth year in a row, a program that starts called Fiesta de Pueblo. You know, you translate that directly, we'll say party of the town. But in reality, it's about, because we talk, by the way, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, Feliz Dia de Reyes, Happy Three Kings Day, because that's on the 6th of January, you know, they celebrate. So this event celebrates the Three Kings Day, you know, and we've been holding that event in Palm Beach County since year 2008, 2011, at the Green Acres Community Park. This year, we have over 6,000 people who attended. It's a free event for the whole community. It's totally multicultural, because we have, you know, not only the Latin countries, Hispanic countries, you know, in, in Latin America and the Caribbean, but also we have India, Bangladesh, and this, this year we're gonna have Canada too. So it's about integration, it's about getting together and doing the best we can do for the community. And one of the things we do in that event is, is educational. I, still, no one of us will be here without an educator in our lives. I still remember very fondly my first grade teacher, you know, so I, I will never forget her, you know. And I'm a student from the previous century, so I, <laughs> I do remember her. You know, and one of the things we do in that event, you know, is about music, yeah. is about food, is about dance, it's about art, it's about culture. So how do we learn? You know, how do we teach? And then we have a lot of the people, when you look at the, we're working also with the census for the 2020. And one of the projections is that the Hispanic population in Palm Beach County is gonna jump from 18% on the last census to anywhere between 30 to 40% for the 2020 census. So it's gonna be the largest minority in Palm Beach County. You know, so it's one of the things we got to look. So yes, Spanish is gonna be there, Creole is gonna be there, you know, uh, Portuguese is gonna be there. So we have many, all the countries from Mexico all the way down to Argentina are gonna be represented at this event. In the eight years we've been holding this event at the Green Acres Community Park, we have two complaints in those years, that the program finished too early. Because <laughs> the program starts at one o'clock it's totally free for the community and finish at 9.30 in the evening, you know? And in, during the, all that time, we have a full cooperation of one of our members, which is the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. You know, so they are working with us and provide a lot of assistance, a lot of help, and they also manage the free, I say, fr did I say free? Free parking <laughs> for everybody. So you might, all, people come in and out, in and out, and they get a lot of food, they, get, they dance, they learn, and they communicate. And this year, let, this, this year, January 6th, when we hold it earlier in January, we had 21 villages, so 21 countries represented. And we, this year is gonna have 22, in January 11th of 2020, we're gonna have 22 countries, because Canada is gonna be there too. So we have India, we have Bangladesh, and the rest of Latin America. So again, we have become a very diverse community, very diverse Palm Beach County. I've been living here only for the last 30 years. And when I came here, the Hispanic population was barely 8%. And that changed a lot. You know, so I would like to say thank you. And remember, keep in mind that the Three Kings is the Santa Claus for the Hispanic kids. That never changes. Right. <laughs> thank you. Thank Good you. evening. Thank you. Hey, Mark, uh, for the clock, just leave it off because he's got an interpreter. So. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Cruz. Um, yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay. Eh, quiero darle las gracias a todos. I would like to thank everyone. Especialmente la mesa directiva. Especially the, direct, uh, the uh, school board. Al final del año, todo el mundo tiene que hacer las paces. Uh, 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 during, at the end of the year, everyone will get, will get alone. You know, we'll, el mensaje a veces tiene que bajar también. And then sometimes the message also has to uh, go a little lower. Eh, por, Todas las temporadas que hemos estado trabajando aquí siempre juntos. Because of all the seasons that we've been here working together. Pero hoy venimos en son de paz. And today we are here in, in, in peace. Para darles las gracias por las cosas que han estado haciendo por la comunidad. To thank you for all the things that have, uh, the school district have been doing for the community. Queremos darle las gracias por demostrar un interés hacia la comunidad hispana. I would like to thank, um, uh, we would like to thank um, someone, I guess, uh, for um, 
for, for supporting the, the Hispanic community. El cual pues eh, Jesús fue presente uno de los eventos que tuvimos con nosotros. Because in this case, Jesús, Cruz, me, I was at one of their events that they have <laughs> yearly. <laughs> El cual él tuvo su propia experiencia y pudo ver cómo es nuestra comunidad. And he was able to see, I have, um, in this case, um, um, he had his own experience and he was able to see how our community functions, how our, our religious community functions. Y el estar ahí, eso demostró que ustedes tienen un interés por nuestra comunidad. And the fact that he was there, that demonstrate, uh, demonstrated that uh, you do have a very big interest for our community. Y eso puso muy contentos a casi todos los pastores de aquí del condado de Palm Beach. And that um, uh, made every pastor in Palm Beach County very happy. Eso fue algo para nosotros como, como el cierre de oro, se puede decir. And this is kind of like a, the golden uh, uh, seal, uh, if I can say, cross. for us. Yeah, the golden cross for us. Es una de las cosas más importantes para nosotros es que también queremos como comunidad. And one of the things that is very important for us is that we would also like as a community. Queremos decirle que la asociación de pastores. We would like to tell you that the association of um, Hispanic ministries of Palm Beach County. Es su casa para poder trabajar juntos. It is your house for, for you in order to be working together. Las puertas que se nos han abierto a nosotros. The doors that have been opened to us. Han sido también para poder trabajar con, con ustedes. As always, they have been open in order for us to be able to work with you. Es por eso que para nosotros como comunidad tenemos que entender que hay un punto bien importante. And, and that is the reason, and that is why uh, as a community there is something that is very important. There's a point that is very important. Que entendemos el desinterés de nuestra comunidad en no querer trabajar juntos. A veces como cuando tenemos que ir a dejar nuestros hijos a un evento, pero no quedarse con ellos. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cuando tenemos que ir a dejar a nuestros hijos a un evento de la escuela, yeah. pero los padres se van. Yeah, it is um, um, when we have to go and drop our kids at one event, but then the parents leave. Estamos trabajando nosotros para que los padres también sean parte de lo que sus hijos están aprendiendo y sean parte de la cultura donde pertenecemos ahora. We are working together in order to be able to, to have these parents stay at the events and enjoy the culture and enjoy the event as well, together with their kids. Aunque entendemos que hay diversidad de culturas, pero un lenguaje es el mismo. Yeah, even though there is a, a, a culture or there is diversity, uh, diverse, uh, diverse cultures, um, uh, the, the message is the same. Yes. Una de las the cosas, language is the same. Yes. Una de las cosas más importantes para los pastores es. One of the most important things for the pastors is. Es que en el año 2020. That in the year 2020. Entiendan que nosotros estamos para trabajar juntos. Uh, understand that we're here to work together. Para poder hacer todo lo que nuestra comunidad necesita. And uh, in order to uh, be able to do everything that our community needs. Y que nuestra comunidad entienda. And that our community understands. Que es el trabajo que tenemos que hacer todos juntos. That um, it is the job that we all have to do to, uh, together. Por eso creo que en el 2020. And that is the reason why I believe that in 2020. Es un año donde ustedes demos, demos, van a demostrar. Eh, tal vez en el año 2019 no hubo tanta oportunidad como en el 2020 que vamos a tener. Yeah. It, it, um, maybe in the year 2019 there was not as, ma as many opportunities to work together, but in 2020 I'm pretty sure there will be more. Y gracias por darnos este tiempo y, y doblarnos el tiempo cuando la lengua de nosotros es pues es un lenguaje español pero que nos dan un traductor y eso fue muy muy, muy bien recibido para nuestra comunidad. And thank you for double, uh, doubling the time, uh, understanding the fact that there are two languages here, and, and, and thank you. Mr. Cruz, would you have him state his name for the record? Uh, my, my name? No, I know your name. Su nombre? Beto? Beto Disqua. Disqua. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. President Katz from the Palm Beach County CTA.
good evening, Superintendent School Board. Um, a little under the weather, I wasn't planning on coming, but I know that Frank musters the strength to come out every year in the suit, so I figured I could <laughs> suck it up too. You could have um, at least worn a red shirt, you know. <laughs> <coughs> um, I'm here tonight to talk about the, the state best and brightest program um, and, and convey as best I can my sentiment and my disgust about it. Um, as, as you know, this week teachers were notified who qualified and many of them not necessarily being aware in advance found out this week that no matter what they did, highly effective evaluation, amazing student growth scores, an A school, a B school, whatever, they were ineligible under the new guidelines. The best way that I could describe what I think this law is to people that don't understand is that if you took a septic tank from an Arby's restaurant and it had a baby with one of those fatbergs you hear about over in London going through the sewers, that's what this law is. It is a disgusting law that alienates people. You need to look up what a fatberg is if you didn't get that joke. It's topical. Um, <laughs> you have teachers who have done everything right. You have teachers who have taught for 35 years and I've gotten these calls from, from 65 year old, 30 some odd year veteran teachers, women in tears because this has made them feel like they are worthless because the state said you're not good enough. And the irony of the best and brightest program is that it's never truly evaluated an actual teacher's performance because the previous iterations had the SAT and ACT component, which was garbage. And now this new component incorporates the school grade so you could have the most amazing growth scores for your students in the country but if your school grade didn't go up by a certain percent that's irrelevant um, so so what i would request and i think it's already a part of your legislative agenda um, is to continue advocating for the elimination of this program wrap it into normal fefp or the base student allocation whatever they can do and also as a compromise if there's no relenting by the legislature to eliminate the program ensure that everyone in the bargaining units in these counties in these school districts are included um, as, as many of you know media specialists are explicitly excluded by by law guidance counselors are excluded by law another um, number of positions it's just you have people in schools trying to share success because that's what the team does in a school and then these bonuses come out and this person does not matter according to that bonus and it is just again it's, it's gut-wrenching to hear people um, in a state of emotional crisis because somebody who doesn't know anything about them wrote some law that says that they're not good enough and they got to eat that a week or two before the holiday season it's just terrible I know it's not your fault and we stand shoulder to shoulder in, in trying to deal with this but th there's got to be some way to break through up in Tallahassee there's already a bill I believe in the Senate to eliminate the program the governor has put forth a new iteration of the program which continues to use school scores so that again will alienate teachers who are at a school that might not have improved that great but they did a good job um, it's just it's a shame and and anything you can do in your lobbying efforts I know the CTA and FEA and all of the local unions around the state will be doing the same anything you can do to, to, to end this divisive practice that just makes people feel like losers even though they're going to work every day and putting in hundred percent it, it's devastating that's the best I can des describe it as and I'll, I'll close with just um, happy holidays to everybody. Um, I appreciate everything you do. I appreciate everything staff does. I know we're in negotiations. That's not really going that well. Um, but uh, everyone's been cordial, and we look to continue that dialogue after the new year. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Kantz. Hope you feel better. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Shaw. Um, the comments that were made about best and brightest, one of the bills was heard on Monday um, to revise this program. But I think it really is critical to, to see what happens because it still doesn't correct a lot of the things that were, were in there. And last week, all of us who were at FSBA know that the, um, the best and brightest thing is definitely high on the, on the, on the target list. I, uh, I serve on the board of directors of the Labor Relations Service, and we had a lengthy conversation on Wednesday about this issue, trying to make sure that, that there's some efforts to uh, revise it to eliminate some of them. So I think that the bill has, it did get through committee on Monday. So it is, it is moving. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Um, that'll take us to uh, agenda topic speakers. And uh, although we have none,